I've had the opportunity of writing for Sesame Street for over 20 years. I fell in love, got married, and had a baby on Sesame Street. My own daughter played my daughter on the show for several years. I've met my closest friends on the street and mourned the death of one, Will Lee, who played Mr. Hooper. You might think that having one job for so long would be boring. You might assume that one couldn't possibly find anything new in a job that lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts as long as Sesame Street has. I mean, how many different ways are there to teach the alphabet? How many different ways can you count to 20? How many times can I correct Elmo or Big Bird about the same things? But it hasn't gotten boring for me because Sesame Street still provides children with images of real people. Showing children real people has always been important to me. I'll never forget the first time I saw Sesame Street. I walked into the student union of Carnegie Mellon University, and there on the television set was James Earl Jones slowly and deliberately reciting the alphabet. A, B, C, while the letters flashed over his bald head. Well, at first I thought I was watching a show that taught lip reading. <laughs> then I saw the characters of Susan and Gordon, a cheerful, warm, urban, black married couple who spoke to the audience from the street. My street, complete with a stoop. My stoop, with trash cans and a fire hydrant. What was my neighborhood doing on television, I thought. I was amazed. You see, you have to realize that in 1969, a black person on television was a rare event, especially on a kid's show. And the people were so real. Mr. Hooper, the candy store owner, looked just like the candy store owner on my block when I was a kid. The stoop was everybody's stoop. I was enthralled because I wish Sesame Street had been around when I was a child. Seeing what looked like my neighborhood and people of color on television had special meaning for me. I am Puerto Rican, born and raised in the South Bronx. I used to watch a lot of television as a child, and I used to wonder how it could be possible that I could watch hours and hours of television and never see anyone who looked like me or talked like me or lived in a place like the place I lived in. How was it possible that I could look through books and magazines and never see anyone who reflected me? How was it possible that you wouldn't see an African American or Asian child either? And why were we omitted in our school books? On the contrary, one of the main lesson books in those days featured two blonde children named Dick and Jane. Could their lifestyle been more different than mine? They lived in a split-level or ranch-style house while I lived in an apartment building. Jane's mother stayed home when mine went to work as a seamstress in a factory. Jane had pancakes for breakfast when I had coffee and bread.